subflooring, and we have, um, like going back to the top again, going to the bottom cord of the trusses. Platform, like I say, they build one uh, floor at a time. They make a platform, then they put the walls on top of the platform. It goes faster because you can build the walls separately. You can build this, uh, the walls, once you get the platform, you can build one wall at a time on that top of the platform. Then they will secure it. This is another type, we're not going to get into this. It's like how they build barns or other type of large structure. Sub framings are newer type of designs they're using for uh, some high efficiency homes. And really there's no studs or framing. It is using like a plywood or a particle board and between it will be sandwiched between foam, foam insulation, polystyrene. And it's a very efficient, very efficient walls. And it goes together very fast because it's manufactured in a factory and it's brought out to the job site and it will be set in place. So it will be pre-engineered for all the doors, windows will be already designed and cut out for you. So basically you're putting it together panel by panel. So the construction goes very fast. So you see here, you got all the separate panels. You can see the windows are already cut out, the doors are cut out, and it's very fast construction. It's lightweight. You can see uh, the guys lifting this and to put it in place. Exterior finishes could be any type of things over the years. So years ago they used asbestos, which of course you would never find it these days because of this health hazard. They had used to make uh, asphalt shingles, stucco, vinyl or aluminum siding. This is old style too, with roll asphalt. It's very similar to the asphalt shingles and they would roll it out to make it look like a brick wall. Of course, wood was a common uh, type of shingle for many years. These days we have brick veneer, so it's not a really a full-size brick, it's a small brick, and but it gives you the finish of a brick and to save cost and also weight also. Masonry construction could be out of bricks or it could be out of stone. In, in Chicago and other old towns, you may find the stone houses, very beautiful homes that was built, uh, but they will be put together with stones and it's, like I say, it's a very good construction. Masonry with bricks, many different type of things. They would use um, a lot of times, like I say, balloon type framing and to build the, um, the, the bricks on the outside of it. There's other pictures of the masonry type walls for exterior and a lot of times they would frame it out and put drywall on the inside. Some old very old houses didn't use, uh, they would plaster right on top of the uh, masonry walls. Here they are actually insulating inside of the walls. You can see some insulation coming out of cracks and seams to make it more efficient because in those days they never used insulation so the house wasn't very efficient. What is this called? Where you see the insulation shooting out the walls. <laughs> it's a problem. Attics is usually unfinished, non-conditioned space. It's not heated but a lot of times houses may have rooms in the attics where they use it to uh, uh, for additional spaces to, for living. So, um, and to make it more livable, they will put dormers to give you more space from the, the roof line. But it should be, always be insulated because that's the house would lose the greatest amount of its heat energy, is, or gain heat energy, is through the, the attic. So putting insulation in the attic is very important. This is a picture of a house that they put the insulation but they never installed it is up there, was ready for it to be installed. So for many years, this house has been wasting energy because of the lack of insulation. Here's an older house again. Only got about three inches of insulation. It's not adequate for a house these days. But you can see how it was put in. It was blown in, put in. There's insulation uh, underneath this floor. Still not adequate these days. 
because of the cost of energy. Here's a house that was finished in the attic, and they put dormers in. They put knee walls to, uh, to, to close up the walls to make it uh, slightly usable. It's now they will build a, fa a finished attic. They won't use the whole attic, but they put knee walls up, and there will be dead space there. In those spaces, a lot of times they use it for uh, storage. So they have a door to maybe get into behind the knee wall and use it for storage to hide things, but maybe still use that wall for, uh, for living or condition space in this area here. But only the problems with that, that is this place where you lose a lot of heat energy. A lot of heat energy because all the seams and how air can leak through. Here's a cathedral ceiling. You can see as they insulate it, they're sealing everything up. And this is the proper way to, to see the construction. You see the insulation between the studs, and it would insulate all the way up in the attic if you got the cathedral ceiling to this point. You don't stop back because this would be a weak point where you can lose. A lot of heat energy. So that's why you have to bring it all the way down to the end of the stud if you're going to insulate a cathedral ceiling. This is an old type of house or apartment building. We had a flat roof, it's pitched, and there's not a lot of room in there, but there's room to be able to get in there to insulate, and, but you have to make sure that it's done properly. Many old apartment buildings never had insulation in the, up in the attic. Here's a guy He's in the attic in, a, in an apartment building, and he's all the way back in the corner, squeezing back there, trying to insulate all these seams using polyurethane uh, foam to do it. Ventilation in the attics is uh, important. There's many, this, in this diagram, you see many different types of uh, diagrams in the construction of it. Roof vents, uh, cupola vents, we got ridge vents. We have sidewall vents, triangular gable vents. All these are designed to get air into the attic for ventilation so moisture doesn't build up in, in, the, uh, in the attic and causing uh, the wood to rot or to form mold on it. And because of that, we need to put uh, in the eaves and the, uh, in the soffix, we need to put vents there so if we get some type of cross ventilation, it can pull up and go through one of these vents this way. Pull in here rises and vented out. So do we need ventilation? Yeah, we should, but if the house is sealed properly on the inside of it, you don't need to uh, understand or why you need it, but if it's sealed properly on the inside of the house, it don't need to have ventilation. But because most houses are not sealed properly on the inside, Air leaks through light fixtures, through bathroom vent fans, through many other uh, bypasses on the second floor, or if it's a single story house, through the ceiling, it will leak through and cause problems in the attic. So ventilation is needed if it's not sealed properly. So the thing is, is that we have to make sure the house is sealed properly. Why attics are vent? Uh, vented. It's vented because most houses are not sealed correctly. So this is what we need to do when we're looking at construction. Reduce attic moisture, reduce cooling loads of the home, and uh, increase the shingle life if it is vented properly or if the house is sealed properly and insulated properly. So this is what happens. They found out uh, in the research that vents do very little for moisture, very little. That's why I said that if it's sealed properly, it will help out. Vents do little to reduce cooling loads of the home. Vents have little effects on temperature of the roof sheeting. So in other words, we could put vents there, but if we have other issues, it doesn't matter. But if you take care of the problems, the source of the problems, really don't need vents in the attic. But of course, these days, based on the building codes, if a municipality says that we have to have a certain convention, you have to do it. But actuality, if you seal the house up properly and make sure there's no bypasses, we don't have to worry about those issues with um, vents. So, consequently, 
Attic ventilation is an option in Illinois. I'm not saying anywhere else, but if you're going to weatherize a house, it's an option. But, however, we need to always follow the code. We need to follow the code to make sure we're doing the right thing. Here's a, was a case study. I'm not going to go into it too much about the ventilation. They had all type of problems. The house is in the cold area. As a matter of fact, I think it was in Minnesota. And they was having problems with condensation forming on the windows all the time. It was rotting out the window sills. It was causing major problems. Mold on the ceilings. It was a major problem. But just some of the things we found with this house. In the attic, you saw the wood rotting. You saw mold forming on the, uh, the top plates. The, the insulation was saturated. And it wasn't because the, uh, the house didn't have ventilation. It had plenty of ventilation. It was because of the bypasses that's going through the ceiling, like through bathroom fans and through light fixtures, was causing this problem. So this is what it looked like on the outside of the house. Because it was losing a lot of heat and issues, it was having problems trying to uh, do it. They actually added uh, vents. They figured adding vents would help, but it didn't do anything. So what it did was to actually close off all the ventilation. And even though they had ventilation in it, they, so, they closed all the bypasses in the house, which helped solve the problem. Okay. And so we're going to finish up today talking about ventilations and all the issues you can run into and the construction of the houses. We went through the components that you find in the framing. But if you had a blueprint, we'd be able to look at a house and find out what type of materials they're using and then at that point determine how to make the house more efficient as we do heat load calculations for both heating and cooling. Once we design the, uh, the insulation value and, or we want to insulate the house by looking at the blueprints, once we do it, it doesn't matter how cold it get outdoors or how hot it get in the summertime, once we do it properly, we are covering both times because we're not going to insulate the house for the winter and not for the summer, but we do it for both. So keep that in mind, we're looking at blueprints. The blueprints will give us the information how the house is constructed and once we know how it's constructed, then we can go through and seal the house and insulate the house properly.